G'day out there, people in the world. Uh, hope you enjoy art in the making with Pete the Painter. Uh, sit down and relax, and uh, hopefully, I can give you some inspiration there to uh, do some painting and maybe learn something a bit different or something. Who knows? Anyhow, sit back and enjoy. And if you like a bit of educational uh, art, um, give us a thumbs up and uh, press that button and subscribe if you can. And um, you know, click the like or whatever, whatever they normally do in this uh, YouTube stuff. New to the game, but uh, I'm loving doing what I'm doing. Well, there you go. I'm doing my little bit again, getting into it. Uh, I'm doing this uh, Beechworth Bakery. One, I done it the other day, and um, I actually painted it down on the spot. And um, uh, yeah, painted it down on the spot, the Beechworth Bakery. And uh, I took it up to a stage. I'll put about another 20 minutes on YouTube with this paint. I'm going to play around for the next half hour, 20 minutes or so. See how far I can get. Um, seems to be a... Um, I don't know, it seems to be a uh, problem with me. Bloody getting motivated sometimes. Yeah, we're gonna get a little bit of blue, get a little bit, try and find a little bit of that colour that I've got there in that background. Put a bit of orange in there, I think that might be a little bit orange here. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit of sap green, I think I might add a little bit of sap green in it or something. Probably too green now. I'll soften it out a little bit. Nah. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, no, that'll look. That's not too bad. What I don't want to do is uh, I don't want the bloody colour to be too bloody too bluey but at the same time I want it to be able to stand out. You wouldn't believe it, I've got a red here and I'm not sure because I've lost the label on it because the paint's that old. Well, it's not that old. Well, it is old. It's bloody old paint, but it's still good inside the tube. I can't find... Can't find the name of it. I think it was something like Rosador or some bloody... Um, yeah. I think... I need to learn to get this bloody paint a little bit thicker at times. I just get a little bit too light. I get a little bit too light handed with it. And um, I don't know. I don't want to go too dark either. Oh man, you got to play around. You just got to play around with this stuff. Uh, hey. da, 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 da. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I'll just not be too fussed with it. 
and uh, not too fuss. Just try and mould a little bit of colour. The, the best thing to do is to get a little bit of colour work. Get on, put the paint on there, get it working. Um, and then worry about what you're going to do because otherwise you never you start playing around these things. Uh, not good. That's not good. Get a little bit of that in there, get a couple of those trees back a little bit because too much going on there with three trees there and three trees there. Um, it's almost like I've got to warm up when I'm painting. Sometimes. Or I've got to warm up. Get a little bit of sky colour going through here. Oh. Let's just wipe that and oh, smash that in. And by the way, I think I might have said it in the last video, this is three ply. And uh, I like it because it's, you know, it all depends on how much sealant you put on it. Well, here we are. I'm gonna do this. Beachworth bakery. Today, on and off, do a little bit and a bit of housework. Try and mould some of this. Paint around. Um, got a little bit messy there yesterday with her. Just mould it all in there, try and mix the colours in a bit. Um, rather than having them just stamped out on there, I'll try and mix it in and mould it in with a bit of the colour. Cause there's going to be more colour going in there. I've got that red in there again. God, geez, that's deadly, that stuff. Good, lovely paint. Right. <laughs> it's uh, very deadly. You only need a very tiny skerrick of it. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, a little bit of light back in there, eh? Um, even if I use a little bit of that gold green, just got a nice bit of tinting strength. When you put that little bit of shit on, uh, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say. That little bit of paint there. This little bit here that I'm doing here, it's just like trying to bring a little bit of life in. 
to the back of the trees. Because they don't just they don't just finish there, they, they they go back. So and get that in there. Just get it in there. I don't know, oh, that's alright, right there. We could even tuck a little bit in underneath there so it looks like it's... and bring that tree over the top of it there. Uh, a little bit of magenta. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm using a, a few of the older type palettes that I've got here. It's like a bit of a dirty palette. And, um, uh, yeah, it's sort of slow moving a bit. Tried to. I don't even know whether the camera can pick that up actually. But uh I'm trying to just get a little bit of Yeah, you know, just a nice little tiny bit of violet in there. Um it's reflected light. Sort of. And uh, I seen a beautiful colour yesterday, and I, I think it comes with the rose door. I think it's rose door. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go and um, check that out because I love that the colour. It's sort of man, it's got something in it. That's for sure. You know, we've got these little uh, um, waddle trees here, and they turn bluish. They've got that real bluey sort of colour to them, a bluey greeny grey. And um, and I just don't. And I like to mould that little bit of colour in there because, you know, when I've been around along the river, that's what you see. If it hadn't got wattle on it, it's, it's just in that time of year when it's... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I'll just put that in there too. And that can go down in there. You can put that colour down in the water. So I can put that in there. A little bit there. Uh, like that maybe, with the brush. So we just pull it down through the... So, you know, the, it pulls the water together. Pulls that water together. And I may even pull a bit of water. I might even pull a bit of violet, powerful light down in there. See that? Sometimes you get that little line of blue water reflective light down on the uh, down on that light there yeah. right I like that mm, yeah I do I do I do I do I do I do, I do.
And I'm putting that little bit of... Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't want to get too carried away with me Aussie gold. You know, some of those Aussie art spectrum colours are beautiful actually. Some of them are pretty expensive. But uh, some of them are worth their price because they've got, they've got that nice tinting strength. No, I'm with you. Your cheaper paints don't have that but tinting tinting straight <coughs> see that pretty powerful isn't that and um but it's not the right colour but it oh doesn't matter I think it's got that a little bit of that in there So, I seen something on um, YouTube the other day, oh a while ago now, about half tones with your colour. Um, and I think I might even show it in this segment because <coughs> I think for someone who's learning to paint, uh, it is very, very handy. And, and at the same time, it's training your eyes to see, to see the colour in a different form rather than just a, an ultramarine blue, you know, because ultramarine blue is dark, dark colour. Um, you know, same thing with magenta and that. And I mean, when the brain looks at those colours, I don't know about you, but even now, even though I've been a, uh, painting for a long time, I find it hard to comprehend looking at that and making that colour. So, I think it's a good, just a, a few minutes. I think, I think the video that I've made is only about Five, five minutes, three minutes long. Not that long. But it'd be just interesting to, for anyone out there that, that's learning, I've just found another way, and it's not my way, of uh, uh, another way of training the eyes to see colour. Because I think it's, it's helped me, even though I've been painting for years. You know, I can sort of get a bit of a more understanding on what my t my colours look like tinted, so that when I'm painting, I can um, when I'm painting, I can uh, I can actually understand or you know get that feeling for me colour and, and understand where what it's going to do when it gets that little bit of light in it, you know, so um, yeah, just those little clusters of colours in there and that's another word I use, any I've been using for years, you know, it's when you've done your basics, put your basic plan of your composition of your, uh, your colours in to, for your painting you know it's not finished um, so you can uh, you can play around and and do things and make mistakes and mould it round because you know you're not gonna uh, you know you're not gonna wreck the painting <coughs> but I mean when you get to that stage on that second going uh, second stage going through 
you get a little bit more nervous because you don't want to you don't want to um, buggy your painting but you know after a while it doesn't matter what you do it works the painting will work you know it all depends on what you want out of life I mean obviously if you want a Rembrandt you well you know I mean I suppose <laughs> I'm not going to go into the complications of painting and why people's paintings are better than others and whatever because look at the end of the day the basics it's all been proven over the last few years a good painter doesn't make any it's got nothing to do with making money you know it's having someone there that knows what they're doing to get rid of your work most painters don't want to don't want to do that in the end they just want to paint and i'm a bit like that myself really well i play around on facebook but uh i don't really go into google too much because um i don't know whether i really want a lot of work i think i'm just happy doing what i'm doing you know i think i'm just happy playing with my paint if i could help someone um you know, if I can help someone, bloody beautiful. If I can give someone... I think this is a, a good way to paint, though. I mean, when you get out there playing, playing to your painting, it's a different story, you know? Yeah, you need to understand your colour a little bit, and... Um, well, you, there again, you don't. Hey, well, you do as you, you go along, but I mean... Uh, I don't even know what I'm rambling on about here while I'm leaving paint, but uh, you know, you see those, it's just, you know, those, those tinted little strengths, they're so powerful, you know, I think once, once your eye sort of picks a bit of that up, I think you're halfway home, you know, you're, uh, Pretty powerful though, isn't it? And you can see why, you know, painters, you know, paint really, really good painters because you've got really, really good uh, thought for, for colour. But there is, I'm no genius, but I can tell you one way is your brain has to see it to learn it, you know? So you've got to actually see it to learn it. So if you know about it but you don't practice it or you don't actually make an effort to do the, the thing, then you won't learn. Your brain won't see it, but if you show your brain, um, you know, if you show your brain, you'll be going, your brain will um, do its thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
spray and how you play around with the colour, isn't it? And you look and when you're doing it, it's not you're not destroying your paint while you're doing it because you're not you're not moving away. You're keeping you're keeping in rhythm with the paint and the colour. Um, you know, so that little brush, I think we need to get a little bit more magenta going here or this paint's going to just take that long to, to dry. Uh, I was just going to bring this, try and bring some of these branches down a little bit darker. So if I put a bit of that beautiful red, right, a little bit of that yellow, lemon yellow, a little bit more of that red, oh jeez, I might even put a little bit of blue, a little bit of sirloin blue with that, and um, just see where I'll go with that, eh? give it a little glaze maybe. Nah, I don't know. You know when you look up in the tree, when you're standing down near a tree, you look up and you're looking into the light, the tree is dark. On the trunks, you'll find when you're looking at the trunk, you find that the, the trunk's really sort of, well, a real dark value. And that's what I'm trying to create here. You know? So when we're looking up into that tree, um, Ah. Hey. So we're really, 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 oh. Try and keep the white out of it. Because when you, you're doing that white colour, it, uh, it just creams up. It's really hard to get it out once you've got it in there. Well, you can't really get it out. You've got to, you've got to let it dry to do that. See, and you're looking up in the tree, and I don't even know when we'll lay this value We'll lay these values on and then I'll have another look at it. Uh, I'm darkening up a little bit of ultramarine blue. And, uh, I don't really want to come down here too dark because the tree starts to... I'll put a little bit of dark underneath there. We can have a little bit of light on there. Pretty interesting, isn't it? That's magic, really. You know, and it all comes from practice. 
Amen. Amen. This is like I say, it's a, the, the technical side of the painting. It's never done in five minutes. You've got to play around with it, mould it, look at your subject, weigh out what you want to want to do yourself, what you want to leave in, what you want to leave out. Um, And that's going around on there. Anyhow, it's uh. Mm -hmm. Try and mould a little bit of colour back around in. Yeah, so it's not too heavy. Mm-hmm. When you run that down there, like your, your spatula down there, you mould those colours all in together. See that? And um, what I'm doing is I'm bending the spatula as I come down. So it's only touching where the tree is. Um, I might even get a little bit more of that tinting green in there. Uh, well, see how that bloody magic, how that tints up. And, Got to have a little bit of light up there, and, uh, and not only that, with the with the gum tree, sometimes it pays to just take across um, um, show some direction in where the trunk is, sort of helps. Give you that feel of, and even at in a distance, you know. I like this paint. I'm liking the way it's going to come up. Give me a good feeling. So when I do this, I could play around with this for hours. I don't really want to um, make hourly tapes, but what I can do 
is I need to, you know, if there's people out there and they want to know, it's not just a five minute job all the time, you know, sometimes you just want to work with that colour. Um, and get things, get, get things working, and it does, it just takes, you know, it takes hours to do. So, you know, you're playing around with every, everywhere, and I'm just looking here, and I just see that there. I'll just try, oh, that was a little bit dark, but anyhow. Um, I can colour that over a bit. Yeah, you because know, it's going to be going to be a little bit of root and that around in there. So just tidying up. I don't know. I'm just trying to put a little bit of shadow in there. Maybe where the tr under the trees where the trees are. But you know when you go back to, and when you go back a bit, make sure there's a little bit touch of that violet in there somewhere. Yeah. And I think there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 